Hello everyone and welcome to Tech It Classic. My name is Sean and today I'm going to show you how to build a megalith or as I like to call it a hyperfactory because a megalith is actually a prehistoric stone structure and has nothing to do with Minecraft. But essentially what this giant contraption is is one big auto crafting factory. So you can see here I've got various condensers that are uh, creating other items and then we have these items back here which are retrievers retrievulators accelerators mag tubes and some crystal chests in between um, on this side you can see i've got various auto crafting tables mk2 which are generating different items for me um, at any given time now i've also got these little guys set up on this side as well over here we have iron furnaces, uh, rotary macerators, um, alloy furnaces, just a bunch of different things. And this entire network is connected underground. So what would happen if I pulled out uh, one of these blue alloy ingots here, then immediately it's going to start sucking in the ingredients needed to make more of those. Now, if I look back here, you may be able to see it, you may not. You can see items kind of flowing very quickly through these tubes. And that's because of the, the accelerators. So in the next couple videos, I'm going to show you how to build this monstrosity uh, in a scaled down form. So let's go ahead and jump back over into single player. Okay, so to start off, let's talk about the functionality of retrievers, retrievulators, accelerators, mag tubes, and all of the things necessary to create this factory. Uh, the first ingredient would be the condenser. And we can see here I have a condenser that has a piece of iron in it or an iron ingot. The idea is to pull some diamond out of this chest back here into this condenser to create more iron. Now over here I have um, a piece of coal to do the exact same thing. So the first thing that we're going to look at is the retrievulator, which is this wooden block here. Now you may notice two, uh, two various sides on this. One is more of like a large Phillips screwdriver side and then the other one is just an output hole. So whenever you're placing these, it needs to go behind the chest and be placed exactly like this. Okay, now whenever we look in here, we have this R and this T. Now this isn't what they stand for, but it makes it more convenient for me. The R represents the item to retrieve. The T is the target goal. So basically, if there are less than 63 iron ingots, then it's going to continue to pull one diamond until this is satisfied. So once there are 63 ingots uh, in this condenser, then it will stop pulling diamonds and it will continue to do that until it gets what it needs. All right, so this is like the target chest or the target item here. If there are less than 63, then it's going to take this diamond and it's going to put it into this retriever right here. Now, since these aren't connected or powered, it's not going to do that. This is just for demonstration. So if you have a crafting table that's trying to pull multiple items at the same time, uh, these will get filled up. Now, one thing to note, um, and we'll probably get into this a little bit uh, in, in detail a little bit more uh, here in just a moment, but uh, this box correlates with this box. Okay, so if the iron was in this slot here and the diamond was in this slot, nothing's going to happen. Okay, so the diamond's going to come in here. This has two different modes. One is the single mode and multi mode. The single mode means it's going to go through each one of these blocks or each one of these slots and retrieve that item before it moves on to the next. And you can see this little box around here. Okay. This box will move from item to item once that particular item is satisfied. Okay. If you have it in multi mode, then it will just grab whatever it can. And typically, this is the mode that I use if I know that it's not going to get too confusing for the retrievulator. Now this block here is the accelerator and the accelerator has to be powered. So let's talk about power for just a moment. There's no interface for this box. It's just a block. Okay. Now the way Bluetricity works is if I supply Bluetricity to the retriever, 
it will automatically power the Bluetricity device next to it. So you only have to power one of these and then it will power the other. Connected directly to the accelerator is going to be MagTubes. And this represents your network here and this can be huge. On the other side of the MagTube is the uh, other accelerator. And the other accelerator will connect via pneumatic tube, restriction tube, or redstone tube to the top of the condenser that you're pulling out of. And we have diamond in this chest here. So that specifies one rule. If we go and we look at this chest here, we're importing or sucking items in to the back of the chest, but we're pulling items out of the top of the chest. And that's very important. In through the back, out through the top, okay? So if we look on this side over here, we've got the same kind of setup with the block of coal, right? The idea is to pull one diamond until we satisfy 63 coal in the chest and then it will stop pulling diamonds. It will send the diamond into the retriever and then you notice this is attached to these other mag tubes which is what's actually creating the network. And then that as well will pull a diamond. Now there's a little bit of a bug uh, it may not be a bug, it may be intentional, I'm not sure. But these will query the items until it's satisfied. So it doesn't take more than one diamond to, to fill up either one of these chests or to satisfy what's in the retrievulator. So what's going to happen is it's going to pull multiple diamonds and the leftover diamonds are going to go to the nearest chest. And we need to have some sort of an overflow. So when we get into this, I will show you how the overflow chests work. So let's go ahead and take a look at an actual uh, live setup. Okay, so if we had designed everything like we looked at before, we would have this very long linear structure. The idea is to go vertical with this design. So I have my condenser chest. I have my retrievulator my retriever, accelerator, and then mag tube, right? Now I'm also pulling out of these chests from the top, going back through a mag tube and back into the network, or I'm sorry, an accelerator, and then back into the network. And that's because my crafting tables or auto crafting tables are going to need these items. So it's going to pull them out of the top, okay? So if I look at the first retrievulator, which, okay, yeah, so this is just diamonds. Uh, this is going to be the chest that everything is pulling from. Now, typically, you would have an EMC farm that repopulates the diamonds, and then everything else uses the diamonds to populate them. So if we look in this one here, I want at least 63 cobblestone, or it's going to pull one diamond. Well, one diamond is going to create a lot of cobblestone, so that's what's happened here. In this chest, we have iron, we have redstone, and then last we have wooden planks. And these are all set up the same way. I want at least 63 of these items or else it's going to pull a diamond, which it has. And then ultimately this crafting table is going to pull these items to make a piston. And if we look in the retrievulator, you can see we need three wooden planks and it's going to pull three wooden planks. We're going to pull four cobblestone. For some reason, it's only pulling one cobblestone at a time, but uh, we can fix that. Uh, one iron and then one redstone. All right, so if I was to pull these guys out of here, you can start seeing items pulling out and then flowing through the mag tubes very quickly. And you'll see the retriever come to life. And we can see that it's already generated one piston. Now it's sucking in the items. and it's creating uh, enough inventory to create another one. All right, so that's how this basically works. And it's going to suck these items out of the back, send them into the network, and then ultimately to the crafting table. Now there's one more thing set up that I didn't talk about before, and that's power. So you do have to power Bluetricity devices with solar panels, uh, not the big solar panels, but the flat ones. And then I'm just con uh, connecting these with blue alloy wire. 
Now I'm connected to the accelerator, which is also powering the retriever because they're connected. And then between each one of these, I just have a piece of blue alloy wire. Now, typically I would use um, jacketed blue wire because it's a little more versatile. You can go up and down with it and it supports itself. So, but for the sake of demonstration and simplicity, I have gone ahead and just used that. All right, so over here, I have the exact same setup in reverse. I want to uh, walk you through how I actually do this. So this chest here, let's go ahead and get our ingredients, but this one's gonna have some diamond in it. We're going to need, let's uh, get rid of all this stuff here. There we go. Let's get the stuff that we do need. All right, so I'm going to need iron. Weird. Uh, redstone. Where's that? Uh, cobblestone and wooden planks. All right. So first I have my condenser here that has my diamonds. Now I'm going to be pulling out of the top of this chest into the network. But per, say I want to feed like dark matter into the chest to create more. I can do that as well. So what I'll do is I'll place my retrievulator followed by my retriever and then the accelerator and then I'm going to connect it to the network like this. Okay, now you can see I've gone ahead and plugged in the blue alloy wire. Now you can tell once these things get power, they'll start to turn blue. And we can see our retriever starting to power up as well. And these will slowly start to turn blue as they get power. Uh, these uh, solar panels should provide pl plenty of power for what we're doing here. Okay, so uh, one thing that we didn't talk about is pulling out of the top of all these chests. So real quick, I'm just going to go ahead and populate these. Um, stick a piece of cobblestone in there, and I'm actually going to need more diamond. Just like that. And as before, I want at least 63 cobblestone, or I'm going to pull in one diamond. You see how that disappeared? And it's now in the retrievulate, or I'm sorry, in the retriever. And then it's going to pull in uh, enough diamond to populate uh, that command. All right, we'll get into that here in just a minute. Now, you may notice that it hasn't done it yet, and that's because I don't have a tube coming out of the top of this condenser to feed into the network. We'll get to that here in just a second. So second, let's go ahead and do iron. 63 iron for one diamond. And then we'll do the same with redstone. I want at least 63 redstone, and if there are less than 63, I'm gonna pull in one diamond so it can condense those to create more redstone. I think you get that part by now. And then what was the other one, iron? Did I already do iron? I don't guess I did. There we go. All right, so you can see that these guys here are looking for something that they can't find and eventually they will bug out. So let's go ahead and connect uh, the network. Now, one thing that we don't wanna do is feed tubes back into these. So what I'm going to do is use some stone covers and I'm just gonna slap those down on top of the retrievulators real quick. And the layout of this is very precise. You have to be careful what you're doing. We're going to go up, in, and then place an accelerator here. And then you can see what's happening now. It's starting to suck diamonds out into these other chests to create more of those items. Now there's no overflow, so they're just gonna go wherever they can go um, to fill back up or to go somewhere. So I'm going to go ahead and top these off here real quick. And this does get very, very repetitive. 
Uh, everything is set up exactly the same way as far as uh, the auto crafting and the condensers go. Things get a little bit more difficult when you start working with um, you know, furnaces and, and things of that sort because they pull in from different sides. Uh, electric furnaces and industrial craft items uh, pull in from the uh, from the top and then they export out of the right hand side but I will cover that in another video and then there are also a lot of things that can go wrong with these and I will also cover troubleshooting your megalith in another video as well alright so for now it looks like we have populated all the items that we need I'm just going to uh, look at my crafting recipe for a piston So I need three wood, four cobblestone, one iron, and one redstone. I'm going to grab double of all of these items, and you'll see why here in just a minute. So two iron, two redstone, now more iron. What did I do wrong? Oh, this must have been the wooden planks. So let's do this here. We're going to... Take this out of there. We're going to swap this out with the wooden planks. Can't believe I did that. And then we'll just say if there are less than 63, we'll pull a diamond. So that's good. Uh, we do need one, two, three, four, five, six of those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cobblestone. And then what I'm going to do is build my crafting recipe first. So I need three wood, I need four cobblestone, a piece of iron, and a piece of redstone. And then over here, I can say, okay, I need one iron, so I'm going to request an iron. I need one redstone, so I'm going to request a redstone. Now here's where things get tricky. I'm going to separate the item that I need and the item that I'm requesting in their total numbers. All right, so if I need three, I'm not going to click three in here. I'm going to have three in a stack and then re request those. Once the target chest is fulfilled, you'll see these just kind of fill up here. And then if we look in our chest here, we have auto crafted a piston. Okay, so this is the basic foundation of a megalith. One thing to note that if we're going to stack these on top of each other, then you need to go through and add covers to the top tubes like this to keep them from connecting to the item that's on top of it. Okay, so real quick, let's hop back over and review the original megalith that I showed you. Okay, so here we are again on the server that I play on, which is MC Complex, uh, which is a TechIt Classic server. And if we look at how I have this set up, I have, just like I had mentioned before, I have the uh, condenser, retrievulator, retriever, accelerator, and then feeding into the network. And then you can also see where I'm using uh, obsidian blue jacketed wire here instead of the blue alloy wire and I've also got some battery boxes uh, storing up power here as well all of my uh, solar panels are up top which we can take a look at here and then they're just feeding straight back down this is actually skyblock so I'm up uh, pretty high up in the air here let's go back home and then I have separated my, sorry, my mouse is jerking all over the place. Uh, I've separated my condensers from my uh, auto crafting tables just to kind of keep things clean. But if you look under here, I'm actually going underground with some of this stuff. So the network is connecting to this side underground and then I'm just covering it up with some cover. So that is the very basic foundation of how a megalith or a hyper factory works. Uh, one thing I did not talk about uh, that I completely forgot about was the overflow chest. Uh, between every other stack, I have overflow chests. And if we look in these, we can see items that were pulled uh, too many times and needed somewhere to go. I've just stuck a diamond chest. You can even use, um, a lot of people use ender chests because they're uh, more convenient for location. 
but I just use diamond chest because, uh, well, no special reason. So anyway, uh, in the next video, I'm going to talk about how we uh, set up alloy furnaces, blue electric furnaces, uh, induction uh, furnaces, things of that nature. So um, stay tuned. We'll check into that. If you guys have any questions or if I left anything out, please let me know. Leave a comment and I'll address it as soon as possible.